Hello everybody, Len here. How are you all doing? So, Attack on Titan Season 3, right around the corner. Might already be out by the time I get this video out, but let's be honest. Do you remember everything that happened during the last two seasons? Because I definitely didn't. Which is why I'm making this recap video, all the while turning myself into a scary ass titan because, yeah, this wasn't difficult enough for me already. Had to make it somewhat creatively challenging. Come on. I'm going to do my best right now to recap both seasons of Attack on Titan, but in case you don't understand a word I'm saying, because let's face it, I'm not that articulate a person, there's a written, beginner-friendly, straight-to-the-point version of this that I wrote while having people who haven't ever seen the series in mind, and it's free to read on the Fad Magazine website, which is linked for you down below. Now, let's go. Okay, time to paint a picture, and my face. Hundred years ago, out of nowhere, titans appear, a race of animalistic humanoid giants who prey exclusively on humans. If you've seen the creepy way titans run, and then how they chomp down on people, you'd understand how the remnants of humanity are finally living a rudimentary life behind a fortress of sky-high walls for the past century. Except for this guy, Aaron Yeager. He's not happy. But I'll get back to him in a minute, because you need to understand how these walls work. There are three titan-proof walls towering over and around humanity, with the rich closer to the center and the poor closer to, well, the titans. That's Wall Maria, Wall Rose, and Wall Cena, and all entrance gates have an extra layer, can you hear the air quotes in my voice, with a district village in between. This is all titan-protecting strategy, but what you need to know is that the walls are strong, crazy strong, even mysteriously strong. I mean, the walls are so badass that they even have their own church and flock. With walls this impenetrable, who could even suspect a titan attack? Definitely not these guys, the garrison regiment drinking on the job. I mean, it's been safe for about a hundred years. Why would a titan attack happen today of all days? Okay, you just totally jinxed it, man. Time for another important fact. The military, divided into three branches. The garrison regiment, with drunky McDrunkers in here who are supposed to patrol the walls. The military police, who basically just protect the rich folk and are clearly elitist corrupt jerkwads. And then the creme de la creme, mainly because they all get eaten by titans on their missions. <laughs> That's not funny, I'm sorry. The survey corps, who go outside the walls to try and reclaim lands from titans and get supplies. They are the hope of humanity, but joining the survey corps is basically suicide. So guess what young Aaron Yeager wants to be when he grows up? Definitely not a doctor like his papa. No. Anyway, introducing Aaron. He gets into fights a lot, which is no wonder if he keeps calling everybody cows. Aaron has two BFFs. Armin, who's your typical smart but wimpy kid, and then Mikasa, the most badass of them all, loyal to Aaron and his family for having saved her from her parents' murderers. Now obviously, Mama Jaeger isn't too happy about Eren wanting to go off and become Titan Grub in the Survey Corps. But Daddy Jaeger, aka Dr. Jaeger, wants to be a cool pops, so he promises to reveal what's inside the basement of their house when he returns from his trip. Remember this? Told you he jinxed it. A freaking monster of a Titan. Yes, I know, all Titans are monsters, but this one is actually creeping over the walls, which is why they call him the Colossal Titan. And he kicks down the gate into the Xi'an Shina district, which turns out wasn't Titan proof. So now all the hungry Titans in the land are flooding the district and eating everyone in sight, including Eren's mom before his very eyes. Guess someone's regretting that last glass of wine, huh? Or was it beer? I don't know. Oh, oh, and another weird titan appears, covered in skin-like armor, and he sprints through the district and bashes in the south gate, which now means Wall Maria is fully breached. So survivors have to fall back behind Wall Rose, but not before Eren vows to erase all titans from this world. A few things happen after the attack, but I'll just lay down a few key points. Eren dreams of his father urging him to get back to the basement of their home while forcing a strange injection onto him. When Eren wakes up, the key to the basement is around his neck. Also, there isn't enough room for everyone behind Wall Rose, so they send some people back out to fight, but they all get eaten, including Armin's grandfather, which means no more adults for these three. Eren, Mikasa, and Armin decide to join the military when they come of age, and wham, jump forward five years where they're all about to graduate as part of the 104th Training Corps. Now, obviously, a lot of things happen during their training years, one of them being getting used to the 
Hang on, let me get this right. Three-dimensional maneuvering gear, a multi-dimensional grappling hook, gas, and blade contraption that lets them fly through the air with the greatest of ease, that daring young man on the flying trapeze. <laughs> Basically, something they use to slash into the nape of Titan's necks, which is the only way to kill them. Okay, I need to introduce you to a bunch of new characters, so hold on tight. We have Rainer and Bertolt, seemingly good guys who get on well with Eren. Annie, good at fighting, but keeps to herself a bit of a lone wolf. Jean, I'm French speaking, okay, who's a bit of a jerk, and his kind friend Marco. Connie, the ever hungry Sasha, Krista, and Ymir. Got that? I'll test you on it later. And surprisingly enough, all of them, with the exception of Annie, decide to join the Survey Corps. Let's just play on the storyline here. Wham! Colossal Titan appears in a cloud of steam the same way it did five years ago. It kicks down the gate into the Trust District and disappears. Oh no! The managers graduated, but they've never actually had to face hordes of invading titans. So, lots of trainees get killed. I mean a lot. Most of them, actually. I'm sorry, Marco. And just when Armin was about to become dessert, ice cream to be precise, because he friggin' froze in place when faced with a titan, well, Eren jumps in and gets eaten instead. Oh no. Don't tell Mikasa, because she'll probably lose her will to live. Not to fear though, because Eren comes back as a powerful titan, saving his buddies, but getting eaten again in the process. Only his titan form though, and Eren himself is extracted safely from its remains. Obviously, everyone is scared of Eren now with his titan form, even though he clearly just saved everybody's ass. The only smart guy? Chill Commander Pixis, who sees in Eren an opportunity to plug the breach in Wall Rose with a big bulky boulder. Try saying that ten times in a row. Using Eren's Titan form, which appears to be triggered by physical pain. I mean, there are easier ways than biting the crap out of your own hand, but you do you, boo. It's a dangerous mission, and even though Eren struggles to control his Titan and almost kills Mikasa, he finally manages to plug the hole. Yay. Boo. Eren's a half Titan. What do we do? We put him on trial for his life, of course. Where Survey Corps Captain Levi. Did I introduce him before? I don't think so, but this is where he's important. So Captain Levi proves, by beating Eren up, that he can control Eren and won't hesitate to execute him if he gets out of hand. Thus, taking Eren under his command and surveillance, where Eren will learn things about his own Titan form, but also about Titans in general, thanks to Titan enthusiast Hange, who's been studying them as test subjects and experimenting on two captured beasts, Sonny and Bean. Hange creeps me out a little, I don't know about you guys, bit of a mad scientist vibe. At least she discovers a few things, like how titans are more dormant during the night. Anyway, speeding up again. Sunny and Bean are killed. No one knows who did it, so Commander Irwin, Survey Corps big dog and leader, decides it's time to ride out beyond the wall to find out what the f*** is in Eren's basement. I don't remember how he finds out. I guess Eren tells him, and they all go look for it. This is a super intense moment, with a lot of ups and downs and gasping, but for the sake of this video not being 3 hours long, I'll break it down real fast for you as they're all riding out using strategic formations to avoid Titan. A female Titan shows up, clearly intelligent, kind of like Eren's Titan, which means that there's more than one shapeshifter, except the bitch is clearly not on their side, squishing peeps under her foot, breaking them apart, except for Armin. She spares Armin. Hmm. Who else in human form kind of looks like this Titan, and was friendly with Armin? Ha! I know. Do you know? Because I know. Anyway, they fight for a long time, many casualties. She even tries to kidnap Eren, but Mikasa was having none of that. All in all, Annie escapes. Oh man, I just gave it away. Annie's the Titan, big surprise. Lone Wolf, the only one in the 104th training division not to join the Survey Corps? Yeah, she'd be a big ass Titan. Well, her backside be big, but you know what I mean. Let's play Capture Titan Annie before she turns into Titan form and destroys half the city. Damn it guys, I said before. Armin, you planned stocks, and now we have two titans rolling around, destroying everything in their wake. Not wanting to kill any more people though, Annie stops fighting, but when an attempt is made to extract her from her titan, she forms an impenetrable crystal cocoon around herself, trapping herself, but also protecting herself. Season 1 ends with Mikasa noticing a titan's face sticking out from inside the wall structures themselves, sending Minister Nick, a guy from the Church of the Wall, into a panic frenzy, urging everyone not to let the sun touch the titan. Looks like old Nick here knows more than he let on when it comes to the Titan's origins. Season 2 is a lot of backstories, side stories, and going back to trainee days, which can be confusing especially if I try to tell it that way. Here's a gist of things. 
Remember old minister Nick here? Well, after being threatened and pressed for answers, he reveals that Krista from the 104th Division is actually named Historia, and she'll have the answers to their questions. Where is the 104th Division now, you ask? Unarmed, isolated, and under investigation. I mean, two titans within one division? They could all be half titans at this point. Anyway, they're hanging out at this remote location under surveillance when titans appear inside World Rose, which can only mean one thing. Breach alert! Everyone divides into teams and patrol the walls to find the breach. But another big ass abnormal titan appears. This one covered in fur, a bit like a monkey. Except he can talk. And the other titans listen to him. Well, sort of, but I'd listen to him if I were a titan. Anyway, he kills a guy called Mike that I didn't introduce, but he's dead now, anyway. But what's important is that the Beast Titan is super curious about Mike's three-dimensional maneuvering gear and takes it with him before leaving poor Mike to be eaten by the little guys, the normal Titans. While all of this is happening, the divided teams are patrolling. Sasha and Connie each check the surrounding villages, since they grew up there. Cue Sasha's backstory, followed by her reuniting with her father, but more important, and what I was getting at, is Connie discovering a titan laying on top of the remnants of his home. What's strange, though, is that the titan can't walk, and clearly didn't get there by itself. Also, the village is deserted, but the horses are still there, and oh my god, that titan just talked to Connie? Welcome back? Mommy? I mean, Connie's mom? What the hell? Now everyone's back from patrolling, and there's no breach in the wall. The Titans are coming in and have now swarmed the tower everyone is hiding in. Um, what's been going on with Amir? She's been acting weird. And there's suddenly a lot of focus on hers and Krista's... I mean, Historia... Uh, let's just say hers and Historia stories. Ugh. So the Titans are swarming the tower, controlled by the Beast Titan. And I knew it! Emir is a Titan, too. And she's transformed. And she dives into the swarm of Titans to fight back and to try and save Historia. Because she likes Historia. No clue why. Did I miss a backstory? There's so many of them. Anyway, they fight, it's close, but the rest of the Survey Corps arrive and saves the day. Took you long enough? Everyone's exhausted. I mean, just look at Rainer. Looks like he's about to crack and reveal to Eren that he's actually the Armored Titan and that Bertolt is actually the Colossal Titan that started this mess and got Eren's mother killed. Oh yeah, I'd be pretty pissed off too if that happened to me. Needless to say, a massive fight breaks out between Titan Rainer and Titan Eren. You've totally got this, Aaron. It's not like it's two against one or anything, with Virgil being one of the biggest titans I've ever seen. Yeah, Raynor and Virgil get away, kidnapping both Ymir and Aaron and running to hide into the titan forest. Guess who's not happy about that? A heavy pursuit follows, led by Commander Erwin himself, the battle through titan-infested lands revealing where loyalties truly lie. Yeah, let's just leave it at that because a lot happens, but Ymir finally decides to side with Raynor and Virgil, Eren is saved, though maimed, so he can't transform into a titan, and everyone is pretty much screwed, finding themselves divided and surrounded by titans. That is, until Eren and Mikasa find themselves standing before the same grinning titan that had eaten Eren's mother all those years ago, and tragically and ironically enough, the same guy that had pulled Eren and Mikasa out of its way that time gets eaten the same way Eren's mother got eaten with Eren just standing there, powerless, watching it all happen. Overcome by rage and despair, after promising Mikasa that he'll always be by her side forever, super cute moment, Eren unleashes a hidden power within himself that makes all surrounding titans come over to eat Mr. Chuckles over here, causing Raynor and Bertolt and Ymir to flee in shock. Clearly they know something about this power that we don't. Season 2 ends with Eren swearing that he will use his power to help humanity, and that they will all go discover what the f is in his basement, but also they want to try and seal Wall Maria, using Eren's Titan's hardening abilities the same way Annie managed to create a cocoon around herself. Connie also reveals to Commander Erwin what he found out at his village, the possibility of Titans originating from humans. The last thing we see in Season 2 is a Beast Titan hanging out casually on the walls with a silhouette of the man in control standing on its neck. What? I wonder what Season 3 will bring. More info about the origins of the Titans, I hope. And the basement. What is in the goddamn basement? No spoilers, please, all you manga readers out there. Alright, here's my finished Titan look. Me as a Titan. What do you think? Scary? Did I succeed? Don't forget to check out the full easier to follow recap on FAD, and I hope that you are now ready for season three. Dun, dun, dun. I'll word you all. Bye.